we're gearing up towards season three within Warzone, Cold War, Modern Warfare, whatever you're looking forward to. But in Warzone in particular, things are getting interesting and in potentially ways that may change everything here in our outlook for the future and actually what's coming in the future. So today I want to examine a few leaks here that have come out in the last few days pertaining to the future of Warzone and what you can expect. So as we go along with your thoughts down below, is there anything in particular you're really looking forward to? Anything that you're hoping comes true or maybe hoping doesn't come true? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know. But as well, if you enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. We're getting close to 400,000 subscribers. So if you guys would like to join the community and stay up to date with all things Warzone, Cold War, Modern Warfare, anything COD related, I'd love to have you. That said, let's jump into the discussion at hand. As always, firstly, a heads up. No images will be showcased in this video for copyright reasons. And as always, be aware this is major spoiler territory. So if this isn't your cup of tea, absolutely no worries. But if you wish to go in blind and experience everything for yourself, this may not be the video for you. But if you are interested, we've got a lot to talk about. Credit to Zesty Cod Leaks, Call of Duty Hope, and the others of the dubbed Cheeseburger Boys that have data mined and published their findings. But let's start out with one of the perhaps most perplexing things first. The rumor of the nuke, map release, or whatever it may end up being, but that coming event in two parts. So at first glance, an event of such a caliber being in two parts makes absolutely no sense. To have a two-part reveal of a nuke event and logistically speaking, I don't really know how that would happen, but in the game files, it seems to indicate this may be the case. With Zesty Cod leaks again in Call of Duty Hope, two data miners we've talked about here before bringing up reference to new game files added with the mid-season update for Warzone in which we're pertaining to event rewards that have menu text associated with it that state congratulations on completing the destruction of Verdansk part one. To celebrate, we are rewarding you with this and a subsequent calling card reward that has a nuke mushroom cloud. But a part one, this again almost makes no sense in multiple aspects. Number one, what would a part one and a part two even entail? The narrative direction is pretty straightforward here at this, that we need to nuke the zombies before they overrun Verdansk, but at the same time, for number two, what would preface that? What would a part one be if part two is the actual nuke? Only thing I can really think of is that we haven't quite reached 99% on that containment protocol. We're currently at 66, and I don't necessarily know if we'll see it happen as of next week for the final week of the season, but that may be perhaps part one, the actual outbreak and overrun, and then part two is the actual nuke event later on down the line, but that's just a theory. But it leads into some other things that may validate that that has to do with the timing, because the timing of all of this, that's where it gets weird. If the event is genuinely broken into two parts, timing is kind of sort of a mess, but at the same time, there's still a lot that we haven't seen in the game files just yet and seems to be integral to the changeover, which makes me believe a little bit further that maybe it actually is the case where we do see multiple steps here to this. When we consider those plague mode files that were in the game files data mined and we discussed here slightly before the launch of season two and then also again after the launch of season two when more was clarified here on it, that seemed to be the entire reason why a nuke would be set off in Verdansk in the first place and we haven't seen anything like this. So I potentially wonder, and for this given piece, this is just me speculating, there is no assets or inside information to back this piece up. I partially wonder though, if the plague mode is the start of season three, bringing with it a new event, like what we had with the rebirth event, like what we had with the outbreak event, and even further back, like what we had with the haunting of Verdansk. We've seen this pattern kind of established where each season introduces us to a new event at the beginning, but I partially wonder if that is going to be the case where that's where the narrative and gameplay driven change for Verdansk kick in and the rest then follows. Part of those plague mode files refer to an end game nuke in some regards, if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head, which could lead to that destruction of Verdansk part one. My only concern then would be, well, when is part two in that new map? Because let's be real, that's kind of ridiculous if we get strung along for one zombie location for eight weeks in the entirety of season two, just popping in and out. And then the outbreak finally becomes a plague in a genuine overrun, but then we have to wait another eight weeks. That just seems insane to me, but honestly, the way things have been going this past season with a lack of urgency to release items, it seems, or keep players intrigued further, I kind of have a genuine worry that this is going to be the case, and coming back to it, that would then also match up with recently data mined items that look to point to a season four reveal with assets relating to Dawn 4 underscore reveal underscore S4. Now we'll come back to it, but Dawn 4 is the upcoming version of Verdansk, Dawn being short for Donetsk, which is a real life city in Ukraine that Verdansk is based on and modeled after, but Dawn 3 is the map we're currently on, and S4 looking like a tether to season four, naturally with that S for season and numerical value associated with it. Now again, that's kind of worrisome, honestly genuinely worrisome to me. I would like to hold out more positive hope 
but another season of potentially the same map that we have now and kind of dragging it along I just don't know how you keep people coming back for eight weeks if there's not much new. Of course, as with all things, though, it is possible this is maybe misinterpreted. It's possible that maybe we do get that 80s map and that S4 designation is relative to a future event of some kind, still relating to the new version of that map, but we just don't know. But on a brighter note here, let's talk about some new rumored things for the 1980s version of Verdansk, the restructure of it. In relation to that coming map, we got a little bit of information regarding that as well. Coming from Zesty Cod Leaks in a since taken down post, we see a handful of Warzone leaked POIs, all prefixed by, again, Donetsk underscore Don4, the city, of course, being Donetsk that Verdansk is modeled after, and 4 being the newest coming version of the map. But we see Airfield, Boneyard, Coast, Crossing, Downtown, Factory, Farms 2, Gulag, Hospital, Layover, Lumber, Port 2, Quarry 2, Stadium, Suburbs 18, Summit, Super, Transit, and TV Station. Now, that, of course, there are some names that you may not recognize with new POIs pertaining to Bridge, potentially in place of Dam that we saw from that leaked trailer, Summit, Crossing, Coast, Factory, and Transit. Now, these were in the game files as the most recent update, that Season 2 Reloaded update for Warzone in relation to points of interest. But what's curious is that we have some new points of interest, some staying, some with a straight-up sequel designation of 2, and then there's some areas that aren't actually named. So again, when it comes to judging the map, I just don't think that I personally have enough information to pass judgment just yet. Because from what we've seen so far in that leaked trailer, we're still missing out of that list the entirety of the Duga radar array and the mines that we saw. So in a similar fashion and similar thinking, how much else would we be missing that has genuinely changed? Additionally, when it comes down to things like Farms 2, Port 2, Quarry 2, how much will this be drastically altered by comparison to the existing pieces in play? Again, I think that it's a little bit too early to pass judgment as well, given that, again, not sure if you're aware, but the number of points of interest could be similar to the map variation. We're currently on Dawn 3, which has only been updated drastically in the form of opening up new bunkers and adding in a new point of interest in Shipwreck, but then also the big changes before that that everyone speculated about back in the day was pushed with Dawn 2. Well, that was literally just goat trails up cliff sides to make Geo somewhat more scalable. So it could be a drastic makeover or restructure of those points of interest, or it could be something minimal. We just don't have enough information just yet. But what is interesting, though, is that it looks like we'll see some of those locations from the Ural Mountains map come over, from that Duga radar array to things like Summit, perhaps. While the map itself doesn't look to be the Ural Mountains Blackout 2 map, it does seem like the landscape and locale was at least attempted to be brought over, which is definitely interesting. Again, map talk, I just personally hope that it's enough. I've talked about it before, and I genuinely believe that one of the problems past the things like weapons of the AUG and FFAR that have zero counters and gunfights are things like map design that has closed the skill gap greatly. The big things that you'd see as to why players thrived early on, I'm talking like the first three to five months of the game, was because they had map awareness and knowledge of certain routes, jump spots, angles, you name it, in the map that the enemies did not. If there's not truly some drastic changes, we're going to be back on that same hyper competitive, but also not really competitive playing field that we're on now over a year later after Warzone's launch, that there wouldn't really be any proper chance for outplays or something like that. To me, one of my favorite parts about the game and anything really is learning something new. And I haven't had that aha moment where I learned a new angle or something like that in a long while. So hopefully that comes. And also talking about map changes, I really hope that we have some straight up drastic changes to one way entries to buildings. Why places like ATC, Promenade Apps by Carnival, Top Hospital, most of the rooftops in downtown, the Gulag Towers, why there's only one way up to those and they're easily camped is just beyond me. That's just the personal annoyance that I have. I'll try not to dive too deep into that because, man, I've lost way too many games because a guy camping in those spots has been just gifted a free kill. But outside of that, there were rumors recently as of things like helmets and a revive ambulance, with the helmets being level 1, 2, and 3, reducing headshot damage by 15%, 30%, and then level 3 doing 30% reduction in headshot damage, plus reduction in flash and concussion effects. The revive ambulance was similar to Fortnite, apparently taking a down teammate or down teammates tags to an ambulance to either revive them or send them to the gulag, but if these ones sound game breaking, I'm not necessarily believing these ones just yet because these actually were in the game files as of before the launch of Warzone and actually were pulled just after the launch of base modern warfare all the way back on November 16th of 2019. So to me, these were leftover game items that never saw the light of day. And I'll be honest, I hope they don't come because these don't seem good by comparison to what we have now. But 
right now that's where we're at here at this a lot of stuff being pulled here and a lot of stuff that again is just rather confusing when it comes to the future of warzone obviously with the new season starting not this week but as of the next week following we are going to be getting some information here relatively soon so keep an eye out here on the channel of course keep you up to date with absolutely everything you need to know but that said that's where we're going to wrap it up so i would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below what do you guys think of this here are you looking forward to some of these things that were leaked out do you guys hope to see a part one and part two of a nuke event do you hope it's all sectioned into one do you hope we get a new map in season three whatever it is feel free to let me know your thoughts down below but hopefully enjoy the video if you did make sure you drop a like down below and of course if you aren't new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so i'm a single thing running all things warzone cold war and anything cod related we'll keep the day with absolutely everything especially as we round into a new season here but if you also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best places to get kicking out of youtube practically on both those because we're a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that link is down there in the description below that said thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace